What's up guys? Today we're going to be learning how to use the cell fracture add-on in Blender. So how are we going to do this? So you can see I've got a new Blender file up and I've saved it as wall explosion.blend. Let's scale this cube down right here on the z-axis and scale it up in all axes and all on all axes. Now let's add our cube, scale that out and let's scale it on the y-axis, scale it down on the, oh, sorry, scale it up on the z-axis, and scale it on the x-axis like this, so we've got a nice little basic wall. Now this isn't very interesting, so let's get on into using the self-fracture. So, firstly you're gonna go into Edit, Preferences, and if you search for Cell in Add-ons, you have to check this box right here to enable the add-on. Okay. Now let's go to Object, Quick Effects, and Cell Fracture. And you can see that I've already I've already tweaked some settings here. So firstly, you could turn the source limit up. I'd say keep it around maybe. It just depends on how good your computer is. Uh, you can turn your noise up because I'll change the round uh, like how how uh, deformed they are and how different they are. Uh, change the random down a little bit, and you can also change the mask if you, uh, because we're going to be doing a physics simulation later. But for now, let's actually do one more step. So let's hit tab and subdivide this. The more subdivisions you have, the more cells we're going to have. So I'm actually running a pretty good computer right now, like an i7 and a 2070 but so i'm going to crank up these subdivisions to around here but if you're running a less powerful computer you should probably use less subdivisions but for now let's go into object mode and let's fracture this so we're going to go quick fix self fracture hit okay now if your computer stops responding that's perfectly normal because it's doing a lot of calculations right now and you can see that it's currently there we go we got this so you may notice that we're getting a lot of Z fighting, and that's because our original wall still exists inside of this fractured version. If you see, we've got cube 001, that still exists in there. So if you move that up, most of the Z fighting will be gone other than on the edges. But if we were to play the animation now, we don't have anything, and that's because we don't really have a rigid body. So let's go here to cell 00, to cell. I can scroll down all the way in our viewport tab there and we can select them all now you're going to go to object rigid body and active and let's set the plane to a passive rigid body so that we actually have a base for it to fall onto not active because active will make it fall passive just locks the movement but all the other things and uh parts of it are still there so let's play our animation Oh, cool. We've got a nice little explosion there, but not much. The only reason we've got an explosion is because they're sharing a little edge down there. You can see there, they're sharing a bit. So now it just kind of falls and crumbles, which isn't, which isn't very interesting, if I'm being honest here. So firstly, let's zoom in and try to pair that up as well as we can. Something around that should look good. And yeah, like this. So. For our explosion, what are we gonna do here? So firstly, let's add in, let's add in a little cube here. And what I'm gonna do is kind of like a little bit of a hack because when you cram two rigid bodies together in Blender, they basically, they it sends both of them flying outwards because it, Blender doesn't know which, um, which rigid body to calculate because it can't store both of them in the same place. So in order to mitigate that, it sends them flying. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take advantage of that and we're gonna scale up a little cube inside of here. And for that, we can go all the way up into our viewport and we can select it to be hidden on our render and our viewport but for now let's just leave it like this so we can see it now what we're also going to do is we're going to go into the physics tab and just set it to a rigid body and let's play our animation now yeah that's much better that is more like a flying enemy that's more like an explosion like that but in order to make better explosions, you just have to tweak the dimensions of this 
uh, 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 of this sun. Um, our little rectangular prism in there. So if I scale it down, you see we've got a more centered and volatile explosion going on in the center. So if I scale that down even more, and then if I hit seven to go into top view, I can scale that up on the X axis. And now if I play our animation, you can see that we've got a much better explosion. I'm really happy with that one actually. So how do we conceal this? Because if, if you look closely, you can see that we've just got our, you don't even have to look closely. You can see that our entire wall is just, you know, crumbling at the sides. So what you're going to do is take your cursor. Let's go into hit three and let's hide the bottom plane and just roughly select the the one the all of the pieces before your plane is there before the triangular prism. So that's good. And for here, we can do object rigid body and we'll just set it to a passive so this way they'll still exist and the other parts of the wall will still interact but it won't these parts won't crumble so now if we select our cube again we can see this right here and we can select this side now and so it's good it's always good to try to be pretty consistent with what you're doing here so let's go into rigid body and to the passive now Let's unhide our cube and play our animation. See, it, it's 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 much better centered, but I feel that we should have done a little less. So again, we can go here, and this time we can actually just zoom in and just select the portion that we want to explode, right right here, like this. This sounds good, and let's get make that an active. So right there. There you go. That's much better. Now, you might be wondering, okay, but we can still see that, the little rectangle here. And just hitting, okay, if you were to select this here and just hitting this, if you were to render this out, you would still see it because you'd have to uncheck the camera. And once that's gone, it's just as good as, as if it didn't even exist. So that's what we've got right there. And we set the mass of these objects to be pretty high. So, yeah. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you guys in the next one. A like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated.